Hello YouTube and welcome to episodes 2 and 3 in the Serial Experiments Lane reaction series. Just right off the bat, funny thought, I, I, I was doing the editing for the last episode and I say Serial Experiments Lane really quickly and then it sounds like something else. So I'm just going to try to really hit that Serial Experiments Lane. Or we'll just call it Lane. Lane's probably easier. Either way, first point today, thank you very much for the support on the first episode. It, it did really well. I was pretty happy about it. It's kind of a niche -ish show, uh, Lane, so it's, it's good that it got the support that it warranted from the poll, I guess. People, people followed through on that. That was good. And yeah, excited to record more today as a result. First up, I've got the comment summary. If this is your first series of mine that you're watching, this is a part where I go into the comments of the previous videos, see what you guys had to say, just kind of summarize the general points of what's going on. I used to read out the comments verbatim and that got a little bit tiresome. So I'm just going to do the summaries now, I think. If you want the comments as they're written, you can go get them yourself. They're, they're freely available on the YouTube comments section. First few points here by Alexander Dunkelheit. First point, this anime seems like a bit of an acid trip and I can't help but agree, especially there's a very, very telling portion where there's text on screen and very like watery rainbow colors and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's very drug induced. You can tell. Also shouts out the music and ambience of the show, which I th also thought was one of its best points. Kind of this ominous power glow sound as well throughout. So the, so the sound design's really good. The music itself, appropriate, I would say. I, I wouldn't listen to it on my own time, but definitely fits with what they're going for. In combination with that, I just love how we're holding on certain shots for a certain amount of time. It, it, it makes artistic decisions and wants you to respect them, which is something that, I mean, I'm used to on this channel, but not used to outside of, like, this channel. What I, what I watch in my own time doesn't really do stuff like this, if that makes any sense, which is generally a lot of seasonals and rom-coms and that kind of thing. Alexander also says that this came out a year before The Matrix, which is kind of insane considering Matrix was one of the big revelations to the Western world about these kind of concepts, a concept of a maybe dimension, or for lack of a better term, that you could go into and you know, be anything you want, do anything you want, blah, 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 blah. This idea of the wired, kind of one of the first ideas of something like the wired that I think we're maybe getting into in lane. There was a little bit of discussion in the comments section about the complexity of this show. This show is complicated and I shouldn't feel bad if I don't get it on a first viewing or even a second because people have seen it lots and lots of different times and find something new and different to see in it every single time. So it's definitely dense is, is their point there. Also some discussion about the reputation in this regard. I know that Lane has a little bit of a reputation as a bit of a pseudo intellectual show, but uh, so far it's been not that, which is good. It's it's held up its end of the bargain and isn't just you know putting ideas out there and, and waiting for you to do all the work. It's it's saying something. I think some believe that the show hits a good balance with this stuff, and some believe that the fan base is a little bit up there and ass about it. And uh, yeah, I mean I have no opinion. My, the the fan base has nothing to do with the quality of the actual thing. Just a little confession, maybe for some of the Monogatari viewers watching. I used to think Monogatari fans were a little bit up there and ass until I took the time and watched Monogatari and was like, oh, whatever you think Monogatari is before you watch it, it isn't that. I'll tell you that right now. So I'm taking that same approach with Lane and it's, it's working pretty well so far, so that's good. Just a really random question I had at the end, which is what do you call those power things? It, it's called a transformer. You, you can figure that one out. I'll thank Sarah Farmeros for that. Yuki Ali has some thoughts into the time period this anime came out and how ahead of its time it was. Like this was before commercially available widespread internet was even a thing in Japan. It was kind of really niche and the, the level of foresight to make a show about this that is actually super accurate as to what it's actually like being online or terminally online or using online stuff for nefarious means is kind of insane. It's kind of insane foresight is my point. It also means that the teaching of code and stuff like that, really novel concept at the time, so it's that's, that's why they're doing that in the classroom. So the next few points are by SY. SY had a very long comment about a lot of the staff stuff and a few things about the show itself and stuff that I may have missed and that kind of thing. So I'm very thankful to them for that. So yeah, all the rest of these points based on his comment 
The show isn't based on a manga, the manga came out after the fact. Originally it was planned as kind of a multimedia project with a art book, uh, anime, and a game. It's kind of what they're doing a lot now with anime, kind of pushing this mixed media thing. Think something like Scarlet Nexus, think something like the there's the new one with the girl and the mech and the thing. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. They, they push the game and the anime at the same time, it's a marketing decision. Either way, the game started development first, and then the anime came out before the game, because games take longer than anime to make. And the art book and the game are only available in Japan, so if you wanted to do that, you could import them and then try to translate them on the fly, but um, yeah, I don't know about all that. I'm sure there's some kind of ROM situation if I wanted to do that, but uh, not yet. Let's focus on the anime first. Then they go into the trio of auteurs that really helped with the creation of Lane, which is uh, Nakamura, Abe, and Konaka. Uh, Nakamura is responsible for Kino's Journey, cult classic. I've heard great things about it. Haven't seen it, obviously. Same thing with Tech Technowise. Again, it's got the X where the C should be, so I don't really know how to say it. But uh, that was Abe and Konaka's baby. And then Abe went on to make Hai Haibane Renmei and Nia 7 which are two things that I haven't even heard of. So that's how cult status they are, and I like to think I'm pretty switched on with this kind of stuff. So... They're very under the radar. Despero, which I kind of noted last week in my little thing, kind of this spiritual success, I would imagine it'll be. Uh, it seemingly is still going ahead tentatively, but again, there's lots of info about it already out there. It kind of hit a snag when uh, Nakamura unfortunately passed away. But we'll see if Despero ever comes out. If it does, then I'd be very interested in watching it on the channel. I think that would be fun. They kind of reiterate that so much of the show is about learning, so talking about really specific stuff in the comments, and that's kind of a theme I've seen throughout all the comments I've read so far, they don't really go into the specifics of what's going on, because I think the journey of discovery is important in that regard. So, so thank you for that. Don't, I guess, go out of your way to talk about stuff in great detail when you know said detail is expounded upon later. That just, yeah, makes sense. You guys have seen it. I haven't, so... Yeah, it, the onus is on you guys in that regard, I think. So they were learning computer code on the blackboard, as Yuki Ali talked about before as well, which was very weird, kind of a foreign concept to me. All the coding I've ever done was, you know, in computer classes and computer labs. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, apparently this is pretty common. I, I've never seen code typed out on a blackboard. That's a little bit weird. Apparently Navi is short for computer in lane, so if somebody has a Navi, it's their computer, and it's short for navigator. Hmm navigator we'll, we'll say we'll get into a few predictions later on the dad's password on the computer is a reference to think blue count two by cordwainer smith and his computer setup has a reference to alice in wonderland so we're, we're very uh, literary there i guess i've never heard of uh think blue count two before but i have seen alice in wonderland i have uh read a little bit of alice in wonderland i believe and if we're going to talk about something that's a little bit acid trippy <laughs> Maybe that's a good reference. I don't know. It's been since the 60s that Alice in Wonderland has been associated with uh, recreational drug use. So <laughs> so that's not exactly a unique connection, but sure. See, normally here I would go into a recap. So let me do a recap very quickly because I don't think it's especially helpful. So Tokyo at night, girl looks disgusted, voice in head question mark, jumps from building and kills herself. Girl named Lane goes to school the next day. People at school have gotten texts from Chisa, who was the girl that killed herself last night. Lane is encouraged to check her emails. Lane checks emails and talks with Chisa for a bit. Awkward family dinner. Lane asks computer-obsessed dad for a new PC. On the way to school next day, train accident. Implied someone got hit. Trippy sequence where maybe we see who killed themselves. Then walking back from school, see Chisa for a bit and end episode. So... I don't think that's especially helpful. Like, <laughs> that's that's not what the show's about. That's not what people are coming to Lane for. So I've got this different segment here now called Ideas. Things we're going to follow going forward that are a little more cerebral, a little more all-consuming, rather than just, you know, the script, basically. So here's some ideas. Power lines. So power lines are huge throughout the show. They're everywhere. You get lots of shots of them. Low angle shots, high angle shots, POV shots. Shots where it's kind of gliding across Lane's eyes. They're very important. We hear the sound of power pretty much constantly. What powers up computers? Power. <laughs> so so that, that may be important there. Eye contact. Something I've been keeping an eye on is the eye contact in the show. Not many people are making traditional, actual 
eye contact with other characters, which is a pretty trademark example of human connection. So there may be a lack of human connection going on here. That may be something we need to look at. Blood on shadows. So I'm thinking behind everything that we're doing, there's a bloody underbelly that nobody wants to talk about. There may be a bloody underbelly to our very being that is in our shadow talking very uh very uh Sigmund Freud there a little bit and maybe that's looking a little bit too far into it but it definitely is an intriguing choice kind of ev- all the dark parts of the frame covered in stuff sometimes it's even this dust chalk mist stuff that is seemingly also coming out of Lane's hands and stuff so I don't know what that's about it's very trippy so we're going to talk about the text on screen as well which is on these rainbow backgrounds who is talking? Who was talking to Chisa at the start? If they were talking to Chisa, is it Chisa's own mind? Yeah, something to keep an eye on for sure. In general, trippy dream sequences. We're doing a fair few of them. We're doing sequences where Lane will be looking at a group of people and then they'll scribble out of existence and, and fade into nothing. And then we'll do a sequence where she's maybe in a bunch of mist and then looking at a girl and then sees her face in two different ways and then she gets hit by a train. So... What are we thinking about in all of this? I don't know. This is a little more concrete. The family situation. So the family seems broken. There's not a lot of connection between everybody. They ate dinner essentially in silence. The mum didn't care when Lane said something really suspect at the dinner table, like didn't even take notice. The sister is seemingly typical teenage sister, not very interested in anything. The dad is seemingly not interested in the rest of his family and comes home late after getting a piece of computer gear and then just goes to his computer lab and does all that stuff which is yeah focus on your family first but again we're trying to we're trying to say something you know continue on from that lane has no real friends that we've seen so far she's very solo i guess the only person she's really had a meaningful conversation with is chisa which is weird i guess she talked with the dad for a bit and she had those two kind of side character friends at school but they were seemingly more just acquaintances no real connection there it doesn't help that lane herself is pretty I guess muted on the whole uh, on the whole character front. She's a uh, she's a pretty blank slate at the moment, but we'll say God is here. God is here is something that Chisa said about the Wired, about why she killed herself, or or something to that effect, right? And I would need to go back and check the exact question, but God is here. So now we're trying to link religion into all of this as well. So we'll see how successful that is, or even if they go in that direction. What is God in this context? Somebody that creates everything, somebody that creates a new world, somebody that creates the wired. Again, we, we can only speculate. The last idea here I have is screen lane versus real lane. So we see this lane that is a little bit more adult, wears some different clothing, a little bit more risque, and uh, maybe does some different things that the normal lane wouldn't normally do. And that is in the opening, I believe. So we'll see if that takes hold in these two episodes. And yeah, just jumping into predictions, I don't have many because there's not much to go off. And predicting will probably be in vain because I'll probably just be wrong anyway. But I think the girl who died, uh, like got hit by the train, was the girl that was crying in the in the classroom at the end of, or not the end, during episode one. You know what I mean? The one that had been talking to Chisa already. In that way, we're getting a very Wonder Egg priority, actually. The, the bad part of Wonder Egg priority, by the way. And I think Lane eventually will go to the Wired, whatever that is may mean uh because there's not much for her in the real world you know what i mean her life's kind of bad they're framing it that way you know what i mean like it's not exciting she's the protagonist she needs to kind of jump into something right that's the whole point other than that i really have no idea and i'm just going to jump into the episode but not before i do my shill stuff so if you like the video consider liking the video if you like the video and want to see more consider subscribing to the channel comment below anything you thought about the episode anything i could do to improve my presentation comment below i'm doing follow for follow on twitter so follow me on twitter if you'd like me to follow you back and the discord join the discord love the discord 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 jumping into episode two of serial experiments lane right now right here got episode two of serial experiments lane up here ready to go let me pop that up on the screen uh, 23 minutes and 54 seconds on this one, so sync up accordingly. As always, there will be a picture-in-picture picture version in the description below. Just going to give it a 3, 2, 1. Radio, 3, 2, 1, go. I'd imagine we're present day, present time, present time, if I could speak. It's important that I'm able to speak, that's kind of what I do. Hello, Wayne. We get to hear this bang opening again, that's good. 
I won't subject you to my singing, but uh, just know that I want to. I may be one of the worst singers ever. They've they've done studies. Oh yeah, the idea of the crows as well. So death, traditional real life death. Yeah, this is the other lane I'm talking about, right? Pierced ears. Oh, she's like shushing there. My setup's really dark today as well. I think it's that little bit of light like there that's really throwing off the balance. Hopefully it improves as the day goes on. It's kind of that, uh, that eastern facing window. This is cool. It's like they're filming a screen in real life. The drum feel there is amazing too. And she goes really pixely here, yeah. It's a longer opening, if I'm correct, as well. Clock in at around two minutes. From, like, I guess the intro through to here. Yeah, this is, yeah. A year before The Matrix, huh? And now we're doing all this? I think the Wachowskis have something to answer for. <laughs> Wait, is this the same scene? No, it's different. Okay. But I think it's meant to invoke the same scene. What are you scared of? Okay, in reference to the to the wired. Just try it for a little bit. Well, that was crazy too. The the cars like pass through people there a little bit. Girls. Layer zero two. Okay, interesting. Yep, doesn't seem seedy at all. Siberia? Is that the name of the club, maybe? I don't come here because I want to. Ooh, okay. What's in the... Like, drugs? Ten thousand yen for whatever you bought. Yeah, I, I would imagine it's drugs. Hollow character I've never seen before. We call it Excella. It's not exactly a drug. Thanks for clarifying. But you have to jump through the same kinds of hoops to get it. What does it do? Uh. Yeah, it looks almost like a chip. What was that? S uh, I'm not putting that in my body. Uh, the music's great, by the way. Like, it's really fantastic. Yeah, that's definitely healthy. <laughs> Whoa. If it has your foaming at the mouth, it's probably bad for you, big dog. Hmm. It's taken the form of like a party drug, right? I feel accelerated. So is it a stimulant or a depressant? Sup? Whoa. That's on some 2001 shit. Girls laughing at me. Yeah, it's making him feel like paranoid. Like really anxious. Who was that? Who the fuck are you? Yeah, it's kind of got lane hair. Kind of. It looked like older lane. Hurry up, come to me. What? 
Okay, we're back. We're back in the power line hell. Ah. Uh. You don't have any mail. Uh, hello, sister. Right? Is this the sister? Yeah, it is, because they're at home. Talk slower. Your imaginary friend. I don't think it's imaginary, unless everybody's having the same collective imagination. Wait, this was before school? That's kind of insane. And yeah, this shot? Classic. Yeah, I don't know if it's correct to say it's blood splatter or not, but it's definitely an ominous red paint. <laughs> and firmly in the shadow. Uh, it's almost like liminal. Hello. Hello, man. Hiding somewhere. <laughs> you creep me out, man. Oh, you just look at him. Definitely have eye contact with weirdos. Okay. Yes. Hello. I guess these are friends. They do say good morning. That's most of the way to being friends. And I guess the girl didn't kill herself. Okay. What? Oh, the big pause there. What the hell? And the... From Chisa. I don't think it was a prank, man. Okay, so you, so they're not talking back still, like they were before. What? What? I agree. Why were you guys at Siberia? How old are you guys? You guys shouldn't be there. I feel like a dad. Yeah, it's a seedy club. That's like basically a drug rave. I thought this too. Hmm, okay. But I thought that would take place entirely on screen. It seems like it's maybe a mixed personality thing. It goes 360 degrees in the wrong direction. Yeah, let's go clubbing with Lane. Interesting. We're doing a lot more um, eye contact, even if Elaine isn't reciprocating all the time. Okay, I would need to read all this. Nanomechanisms? Nanomachines? Secretion of a specific hormone. The time sense.
Okay. Oh god, that's a lot of text. True to 12 times. It's unknown how long its effectiveness dot dot dot. Hmm. You definitely have some weird time stuff going on, Lane. Are you on drugs? Ooh, getting an email. Dopamine. From Arisu. It was uh, Chisa Arisu, right? Oh, wait, no. You were Arisu. Never mind. Why are you going to Siberia on a school night? Anyway. Thank you, Lane. Making good choice. I'm such a lame, honestly. Everyone is connected, but are we? Dot, dot, dot. Okay, seemingly afternoon. What's going on in the closet? What is that? Don't really understand. Why are you all alone? Is it the same man from the way to school? I think it might be. It's a different man. Man? Girl? Oh, the reflection there. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> sure. Fair enough. What's up? That's not terrifying at all. Okay, you're the person from the dream sequence. Dead girl. Ghost girl. Ghost girl hit by train. Okay. And there was like zombie. They looked like the zombies recently from Monogatari. That's okay. Same shot again. Uh, is that a ambulance? No, it's a delivery truck. Okay. What are you delivering? Oh, it's the... Is it the new Navi? The, the dad got onto that very quickly. Yes, I can. Maybe when she gets the new computer, there'll be a new email. What's so cool about it? Did you get blessed up with a new, uh, new setup? Top of the line. Fully loaded. What do you mean by this? Okay, so she got like rich parented and got like the best PC. You will soon enough. Great. Is there some relevance to having an adolescent cast as well? You'll know soon enough what the what the world is actually like. <laughs> I do like this shot. Okay, dad's back. Uh the fuck am I looking at? Okay, that is the mum. Okay, I was like, if that isn't the mum, then we're in a bit of trouble. Okay, there's seemingly more of a connection between the husband and wife than I was Im implying then. Uh... 
but I need to eat. Bro, the eyes. I don't trust Lane, bro. It's interesting. Direct contrast to what I was talking about. There's so much more eye contact to this episode. Okay, so your, your technology grows with your relationships. The conflation between the two. Great, doesn't seem ominous at all. Hello, Copland OS Enterprise. Okay, I'm Lane, sup? Hello. There's so much voice stuff with phones now too. Scary. Hello. Mika is the sister's name too. I think you might have some mail. No way. Are they out on the town? Come on, answer it. It's annoying me. I said I wasn't coming. I hate when friends do this. Where are you? I said I wasn't showing up. Why won't you come? Whoa, what is going on there? Very interesting. Okay. Hello, Siberia Cafe and Club. Yeah, definitely come to this drug den. That looked really seedy. A real hole in the wall. Okay, like, children are going here. Maybe I'm just naive. Maybe kids do do this. And I was just spending too much time playing video games. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't. Bro, she's a style icon with the hat. Grown-up clothes. Again, this talking about growing up. Relationships. And you're back here, are you? Well, our lane right now doesn't. Is that a gunshot? Yeah, definitely a nice place for kids to be hanging out, for sure. <laughs> Why'd she fall over? Did she get shot? Hope not. What's time doing for you, Lane? Blood and technology again? Is that guy got a lightsaber? No, he's got a gun. Is this our druggy from the start? Yes, seemingly. It's agitated and paranoid and stuff. I don't know. Nothing. I'm sorry. 
What's happening? The blood. Why are you making me do this? You want that scattered gods? Whoa. He won't shoot me. He doesn't have the guts. Well, you took the drug. That's a lot more confident than the lane we know. No matter where you go, everyone's connected. Whoa. <laughs> okay. What does it all mean, though? I can't say I saw this coming. Okay. Yep, double murder-suicide in the club for children. And to be continued with the red and the blue again. Interesting. Very interesting. The mention of the scattered god. Who is the scattered god? Or is that even a term? Am, am I maybe reading that wrong? So seemingly there's multiple aspects to Lane's personality that also exist in the real world. They can be switched on and off. Wired, unwired. There's some kind of change happening there. Some kind of adolescence. Some kind of coming out of their shell. There is this place called Siberia, which is seemingly a very appropriately named uh, cyber rave type operation club. That a lot of kids go to. I think that's a lot of what we're talking about as well. Like, this is dangerous for kids. Like, kids shouldn't be going and doing this, but we're letting them. Is that something to what we're, we're talking about? The sister has some interesting things going on too. What else was in this episode? She got haunted by a bunch of ghosts. Along with like a chief ghost. Yeah, a strange one. Okay. Radio time to jump into a little bit of analysis on episode two of Serial Experiments Lane. So, a very, a very weird episode. I think I've got to say that a lot for Lane. Uh, yeah, not what I thought was going to happen happened, which is cool. We're going in some different directions. It's definitely a little more cerebral than I thought it would be. I thought it would be a little more literal. The, the wired versus the unwired versus everything else. There's seemingly a little bit of a split happening in Lane's personality, somewhat where she's a little bit distant, a little bit uninterested, a little bit forlorn, a little bit lonely. And then there's this very aggressive lane that demands that the PC is built immediately. That demands that, old oh, mate, we're all connected, everyone's connected, you can't stop this, right? What is happening there? You know what I mean? Like, actually what is happening? We're following up a lot of the ideas, power is still very important, uh... Harsh, beaming light, very summary. It's it's making the real-life world, at least the world during the day, very inhospitable, very unpleasant. By design. Definitely by design. What did we literally have happen? Let's think about it. We started in a scene where Old Mate took a cyber drug and then saw Lane 
somewhere, even though she has no recollection of being there. And then as a result, he becomes increasingly agitated, and by the end of the episode, has killed two people and then turns the gun on himself after Lane has a chat. We have the presence of this club called Siberia, all the kids go there, that kind of thing. They go out at night and party, essentially. There's somewhat of a conflation with sexual stuff with the drug. She pulls it out of a out of a cleavage. Um, there's some conflation with the drug with actual drugs. So the cyber wired realm with drugs, which is something that we've seen before. There's definitely addictive properties to being online. That is that is true. I guess it isn't essentially online. It's just technology. So. I guess she is obsessed with the emails. She's obsessed with the connection between maybe the living and the dead. Maybe the, like, not really a physical connection. Anyway, like, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, so I'm just going to get the episode up and I'm going to go through it. I'm going to pause when I find stuff I think it is interesting while simultaneously trying to make sense of it all because it was still a little bit confusing. But I think that's by design. All will be revealed, that kind of bag. I guess I can talk about present day, present time. Is this meant to indicate that this story is somewhat universal, somewhat uh, stands out of time? It could be applied to a lot more different places and concepts than I give it credit for. may not be entirely relevant just for the 90s. It could be relevant going forward. That's definitely true. Anyway, we get to the other side of the opening and we get the exact same shot. I think this is the first shot in episode one as well. It, it, it threw me for a little bit of a loop because I was like, I was pretty sure I clicked on the right episode, but let's see. Again, still this really canny, tinny, like, circular audio. Like you're listening to the show through a cup, something like that. What are you scared of? Just try it for a little bit. As we're getting, like, low-angle shots of power lines and this female voice. I can't quite pick up who the voice is. It might be one of the friends. So this episode is called Girls, and I think it's related to her friends at school. Somebody, or a group of people we didn't see last episode. Like I even said in my little little spiel before the episode, that hey, she doesn't really have any real friends, so getting detached like this would be easy, right? It's not the case. We just didn't really give it time to, to start up and show off. She definitely has friends. They definitely maintain eye contact. They're definitely real friends. They are a little bit on the wilder side, and that, but that's okay. They're, they're allowed to be. And yeah, they, they, they seemingly respect Lane, and Lane respects them. So that's a nice change. That's somewhat healthy in, in the show that is very much unhealthy. Cool, and we start in this club, right? I think they do a great job of making it seem really claustrophobic of the, the loud music playing in the background, kind of this breakbeat, uh, almost uh, drum and bass type operation in the back. Very 90s house. I think it does a great job setting the mood. Lots of different lights, lots of different strobes, get lots of different colors, seedy folk everywhere. Again, talking to human physical connection, whether that be sexual or romantic or anything in between, uh, and Siberia, which is wired, which is internet, which is technology. Siberia isn't exactly a subtle name, but we're going to go with it. I think it's pretty cool. Definitely on some Matrix shit. I don't come here because I want to. I just come here because it's what people do. It's what we do to connect. You know, it's what young people do. They go to clubs. I've definitely been in this situation. So the gas mask, right? Other than just an aesthetic choice for the establishment, I think it's also talking to something about... I mean, I'm, I'm on a respirator. I, I can't breathe this air right now. It, it's so unhealthy in here. It's so polluted in here. There's so much of what is not breathable in here. There's so much not natural in here. And then reaches into the cleavage and pulls out our little cyber drug. Accela, accelerator, Accela, Excel, something. Accela? I think it's Accela. And he mindlessly throws out 10,000 yen to the to the lady. He's just chucking it out for one dose. So we can imply that this right here is his thoughts right now. It isn't, this isn't a separate entity across all episodes. It is just the internal thoughts of the person in the scene. Can we then imply from this that the first scene in episode one was, this was Chisa's thoughts through the process? Because so far we've seen the kind of demise, right? The, the downward spiral of two different characters. This, this bloke who ended up killing himself, and Chisa, who heard something or did something and ended up killing herself as a result as well. So either way, we can imply that this guy, he said, I don't come to these places often. I just get dragged around. It's the only place I come here out of obligation more than anything. 
but he's still on the drug, isn't he? So I don't keep talking about it. We're doing a lot of slow zooms, a lot of holds, a lot of interesting faces, a lot of, uh, yeah. A lot of stuff following up from the production techniques of the first episode, the stuff that makes the show tick for, in my eyes, kind of this directorial style that really respects your time and knows that what they're doing is important and wants you to think that too, and as a result, you do. So this is Excella. It's not exactly a drug, but it kind of is. It's a little more cyber than that. It's it's something you put in your body that activates hormones that make you feel all a little bit goofy, a little bit silly, a little bit not normal. If that's not a drug, what is? It seemingly it is most closely related to maybe something like speed. But speed, again, I, I don't do drugs. But I imagine that it would speed everything up, not slow everything down. Because if you're, if you're on depressants, you would slow down, right? I, I've been drunk before. That's what happens when you're drunk. Everything slows down. Everything spins. Everything's like that. You're not like hyper. It's not like you're on a stimulant. It's not like you're on like a party drug. So you have to jump through some hoops to get it. It is seemingly in this little like alien pod thing. And he licks his lips when he sees it. So even though he doesn't want to come here, even though he's a little bit, you know, nervous and... Maybe the obligation is his addiction, right? I don't know. It's a weird one. This guy seemingly is only ancillary as well, so we're not going to climb in too much. He takes the cyber drug and let's see what happens. Chases it with a bit of alcohol, as you do. Or maybe it's just like a Coca-Cola and this guy's like 16. I don't know. It's very weird on the ages. Because this to me feels like this guy's like 21. But he's probably not. He's probably closer to Wayne's age. He starts to see the kind of shimmering on the Coke bottle. And you see the Coke bottle start to warp as well a little bit. Like his vision's curling. Foaming at the mouth, always a good sign. I feel accelerated. That's good. Except no, it isn't at all. And then we hear the music that's been a constant presence in the scene slow down. Indicating that, hey, yeah, time has slowed. And he zooms in on a bunch of women. Which is interesting. Again, this idea of cleavage, drug... Sees lots of women everywhere. Ends up shooting two women, I think. Like, seeing stuff at a million miles an hour at this club, overstimulated. And these are our girls that go to school, maybe? These very similar to. So he falls to the ground, and we see one girl that was looking at him here. Who looks very different than who we think it is. She's in almost, um, Masato drip. Put a, put a picture of Masato up here. Yeah, a little bit, huh? And yeah, the, the, the biggest indicator for me was, see, she doesn't normally wear earrings, but she wears earrings in the opening. And this X on the hair, which is probably the greatest indicator that it is somebody similar to Lane. But again, we've, we've never seen Lane do this, except for maybe the last scene of the episode. Seeing it back on a screen as well, pausing it. And it's the last thing he kind of remembers of his trip before we go back to normal time, is seeing her face and whatever she said to him. Again, we, we've done a lot of talking but no noise coming out in in lane so far so this isn't unexpected i just wonder what she said so this is, okay so let's place him inside baseball a little bit i think by the end of this it's going to be a story about transhumanism into lane becoming permanently on the internet becoming part of the internet all of us kind of falling into this trap of of being terminally online, which a lot of us already are. So if we take that perspective, and he takes the cyber drug and then sees Lane, it, you know, there's, there's some kind of connection there between Lane and cyber. She just got a new computer. She's talking to some kind of godlike figure slash Chisa through her email system. I oh, know there's some stuff going on. There's some stuff to keep an eye on for sure. Hurry up and come to me. So this is the guy thinking this to Lane. And then right back to where we were with the power lines and that. Very interesting. No, that's not it, she says. So this is maybe the same night. And she wrote all this, like, scary code down. Like, here. Like, who is she talking to before she says I have no emails? And typing all this code. Unless she's just logging in now. Is she using the PC unconsciously to do some stuff? The fusing of the real world and the wired. And then the sister's just watching from, from the side there. No, wait, this isn't the night. This is the morning. Has she been doing this all night? I've never seen her sleep. 
interesting. Maybe I'm 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 a little bit agitated. I need to just get through some more stuff. Like o tomo dachi, very slow. So Lane was talking aloud, like very protagonistically, to her PC while looking for emails. And then the sister, Mika, thinks uh thinks she's talking to her imaginary friend. Or something like that. And then, yeah, intense focus on the eyes. No eyes last episode, all eyes this episode. It's like she just uh, jumped out of a stupor just there as well. Like, like right here. Like, like gasping and then turning to something like, wait, was I really doing that? Again, this whole hypnotism idea. A lot of repeated shots this episode. I don't dislike it because the shots are so immaculately crafted and we're doing interesting things with them. But yeah, just something to note. So do we want to talk about this creepy guy? Because I don't really want to talk about him. And the music and the ambience builds greatly here too. So the look on the face here is so like, I know you did something. Yeah, this one. Like, like he, it's like he's looking at something he's never seen before. Maybe he's tripped out of his mind as well. Maybe. Then Lane shuts her eyes, we get a black screen, fade to black, and then the next time we see her, she's talking with her friends here. See what I mean? It couldn't have been her. So basically the girls were out last night at Siberia, and they saw that girl that looked like Lane. And they're like, well, Lane wouldn't do this. The Lane that we know, that's weird. Lane wouldn't shout or wear that provocative outfit or... No, it's not even that provocative, honestly. We're, we're outfit like that. She's pretty chaste at the moment. Either way, it's it's not like her. It's out of character. So it couldn't have been her, right? And I love the editing style here. So they talk. Then we pan over. Like, vroom. And then back again. Like that. Like, there's such a distance between the two, right? They're not even on the same plane right now. Lane is seemingly obsessed with the emails a little bit. Asks uh, Julie, I think her name is, about... If she had any more emails. I also got that wrong. It wasn't Judy that, that got hit by the train at the end of the last episode. It is seemingly some other entity that is very scary and appears again later in this episode. Either way, Judy hasn't got any more emails. Lane hasn't got any more emails. Maybe it's going to stop. So it's their first time out there last night as well. We finally worked up the nerve to go there. Again, it's some element of the wired to it as well, right? With the name. Again, it's a pretty flimsy idea. But it's, it's adolescence, it's your first time out, it's your first time seeing all these things that are very dangerous, but you don't perceive them as dangerous yet because you're a child. And most of the time you're fairly safe, but sometimes you're not. I've got very dad energy today, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm caring about these, these fictional characters so much. But yeah, interesting ideas, for sure. And Lane doesn't finish the sentence here. She says, last night I... dot dot dot, we know it wasn't you. What did you do last night? Were you on the computer all night? Did you just wake up out of a trance on the morning when the sister started talking at you? Because of this, the girls get the idea to bring Lane with them the next time they go out, which is actually going to be tonight. I don't know how you're going out on school nights and making it work, but again, I'm not in your shoes. So they recognize that Lane is a little bit in her shell right now at school. They want this more boisterous, actual Lane to come out, so they... Say, hey, when she's at the club, she does come out of her shell. Let's bring her there. Let's see what happens. You'd have more fun if you were a bit more sociable, Lane. Hmm. Hmm. How do we connect to people? Hmm. Yeah, lots of stuff going on. All right, I don't know how much I want to read of this. I don't know how relevant it is, but I'm going to. Anti-VEGF, human monoclonal antibody. The anti-VEGF antibody is an inhibitor of the angiogenesis blood vessel growth that may hinder the growth of cancer tumors. What? I don't get why this is here at all. But it's something, it's talking to it, Excella as well. Anyway, Accela uses nanomachines to oscillate the specific frequency within the body. It basically gets in your brain, releases hormones that affect the idea of time. So it slows down time. That's all we really need to know about the mechanics of the drug itself. Other than that, it is mechanical. It is technology. It is potentially even wired. I think the point here is not for you to pause and read it, because I'm not going to pause and read the rest of it. I'm just reading it in my head right now. A little bit. It's meant to be like, hey, this is really complicated and this is kind of like a TV, um, like infomercial type jobby trying to sell you on it or the effects of it. Yeah, something about smart materials that make up the nanomachines. Okay, weird. 
Anyway, we get that little PSA about the drug in the middle of class while Wayne is still kind of staring off into space, not really focusing. We're not even interpreting anything on the whiteboard, whiteboard, blackboard at all. Lane notices an email on her phone and she wants to go check it. I think she wants this to be an email from Chisa, but it is not. It is instead an email from, uh, she had a name, Arisu, yes, this one, who was texting her in class to have some fun at Siberia tonight. And this slow zoom here as she's like winking. It's kind of hilarious, but it's also really creepy. And this pensive look from Lane, it's like, oh yeah, maybe I could. So yeah, she says that she'll pass tonight eventually, but she does come around by the end of the episode. Uh, I also like the UI on the phone. It's kind of nuts. It seemingly is very personalized. She loves a, she loves a bear, Kuma, um, and uh, wears the bear onesie. She's very cutesy, you know what I mean? Not really going to clubs vibe. Everyone is connected. Okay, and that's Lane thinking that, right? After sending a message like that, communicating without words or, or even gestures, really, besides some, actually, um, they're able to communicate their, their feelings. They're even able to lie. I guess that's a little bit scary, and thinking everyone is connected after that is a natural result. Now we get a very interesting sequence. I'm not really even sure what to make of it, other than it being really creepy. So we see this face in the door. Originally, I thought it was the same guy from the start of the episode, but no, it is something far more sinister. It's the female student that got hit by the train, and there's also these weird uh, fog, chalk, dust, zombie people that walk out of the walls and then disappear into nothingness. And then the, the no steps zoom straight up, and then this. This visual, this, on one level, I'm fine, I'm content, I'm a little bit scheming, blah, 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 but on the inside, I'm screaming. That's what I'm getting from it. And it's kind of terrifying, honestly. I don't really like it. It's probably the most horrific moment of the show so far, probably, I think. On her way home from school, Lane sees a delivery truck at her house, and it is her new PC. So there's a bunch of new boxes in her house that she has willingly let in. She was the one that opened the gate which is an important touch, and she is now even signing for it. And the guy tries to sell the machine as, you know, he, he, he must really like computers in his off time, and he's a little bit older, and soon you'll see what it's really like to be, you know, a little bit older, and, you know, this is exciting for you. With all of this, you can move around without any stress at all, even in The Wired. Have you been to The Wired, my brother? I, don't, I'm, I still don't really have a concept of what the Wired is. I thought you had to die to get there, but I guess not. I don't know anything about it either. You will soon enough. Very ominous. Again, older character talking to younger character about an experience that they're going to have. The music here is kind of terrifying. It's very bleep bloopy and uh, cold, industrial. So Lane is lying down on bed waiting for Dad to get home to ask him to make the, the computer to put it together. I'm a little bit weird on the concept of time. Like, how long is the dad working? So he would probably go to work, I'm guessing, like, 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock, something like that. And he's home after dark? I know they work pretty hard in Japan, but I didn't think they worked that hard. Like, working, what would that even be? Like, a solid 10, 11-hour day. That's pretty, that's pretty hard, doing that day after day, plus commute. We agreed with the scene of the mother and the father making out, kissing, at least passionately. She's really into it. Um, but again, this is debunking my theory a little bit. I thought there was going to be a lack of actual human connection between the two. Or maybe this is just fleeting. Maybe this is we like something that she only gets at the door before he focuses on computers again and doesn't do any of this stuff. And get that mess cleaned up soon, all right? It's in the way. She seemingly fucking hates computers. That's the vibe I'm getting. I'll set it up for you after dinner. Papa, I want you to set it up now. And again, intense eye contact. Intense. Something we didn't see at all during last episode. Why are you in such a rush? Continues to stare. Lane. Lane, I'll do it. And the glasses shade over. Hmm. She has more power than she thinks, Lane. She really does. You can't keep using that children's Navi forever. Again, this, I, I'm picking up a little bit more. It's, it's, all, it's a little bit about growing up. Growing up with technology, uh, replacing actual traditional growing up methods with technology and technological stuff and everybody being connected and what is a real human relationship during adolescence, right? I think that's what the scene is saying later on when, when she sees like literal school children walking down. It's, it's skewing younger and younger. Siberia, they're all going to this place, right? 
it's all affecting it's affecting the youth that's kind of what we're saying it'll mature alongside your relationships with people understand lame yeah i think i'm starting to we still get a great look at these really creepy os's again it's extremely 90s energy on the ui design but still got technology that even surpasses some of what we have now, like true actual voice recognition thrown into everything. I know there's a little bit of it, but not as much as you'd think, especially in the future. In Imagine you're in 98, you'd say, oh yeah, we have flying cars by, by 2023. Not really. Well, not publicly available true flying cars anyway. The sister's always watching too. So, so Lane's got her new Navi, she set it all up. And uh, yeah, the sister's still at the door. Because she saw what ha what happened in the morning, how glued she was to the PC that she was talking to it aloud. And then she just gives up, walks away. Unless there's something else going on there. Maybe she really wanted the, the, the new computer instead and didn't get it. So she checks her mail on the computer, has no new mail, and hears the phone ring on the bed. Lane, where are you? Everyone's waiting. You have to come. I hate this shit, getting like peer pressured into going to parties and stuff. Like, if I just don't want to go, I don't want to go. Like, but in a true teen adolescent sense, she succumbs to the peer pressure. It zooms in here on the PC, and it says, why won't you come? Like, it's asking the question of her. Again, this conflation of the cyber with Siberia. Uh, there's this little effect here, which I think is kind of insane. I think it's meant to be the light, maybe? but it moves very quickly. It's a bit of a weird one for sure. And Lane has made her way to Siberia that night and she's wearing a cute little normal outfit that she normally wears. This isn't like the Lane that we saw the other time, the, the first scene of the episode. Lane is nervous to go down into the basement until she gets called out by some like literal like kids for blocking the stairs down. There's something in that for sure. Like very young. They call her Onesan, so she's clearly older than them. And she looks very young. She even has a good look at her clothes there as well. Strange. And you're wearing like a party dress. Like, fuck off. Either way, we're straight back to our very claustrophobic uh, artificial lens on everything, I guess. Our, our, our directorial techniques there. Slight low angle here. It's like we're being smothered. And don't you have anything better to wear tonight? Lane. I mean, they're again, they're all in going out dresses and that kind of thing. Lane's in, I guess you'd call it a little bit frumpy. I don't know. It's cute. I, I like her drip. I, I rate it. So there's the same guy from before, from the start of the episode, and he may see Lane out of the corner of his eye back at the same club again. Or he's already tripping balls and he's already thinking of doing something really bad. Lane doesn't dress like that or talk like that. Did she really look like me? Like I'm becoming something else. I'm transforming. And then we hear a gunshot. And yeah, it's it's the creepy guy from the start of the episode that was high on drugs and really paranoid. Everything turns to pandemonium, everyone's running everywhere, and Lane keeps focusing on this blood seeping from, I'm guessing, one of the victims, right? Again, the combination of blood with technology, we've seen that with, uh, with Chisa. If anything, it's reminding her a little bit of Chisa's situation. The music playing here is really great, ominous, little guitar strings, very 90s. And yeah, we see Old Mate who's been tripping balls, basically to the point where he just shot two women. Lane is stunned a little bit. She's standing there, not knowing what's going on, not knowing if she's going to die next if she moves. It's a very treacherous situation. But Lane is still tripping on the blood. She's seeing something else. Again, Lane's always been a little bit strange in this regard. Arisu goes to check on her. The gunman notices Lane, says, what are you looking at? Arisu pleads with Lane to run, but she keeps focusing on the blood. Go away, he says. The spotlight hits Lane. He notices who he's been talking to this whole time. Somebody that may have said something to him way back when, when that we didn't get to hear. Why are you making me do this? What right do you have? I just wanted to clear my head, that's all. So this is a result of you taking the truck. I don't know anything about it. Leave me out of it. You're that scattered gods... Dot, dot, dot. Servant? Plaything? I don't know. I don't know who the hell's the scattered god. I don't want anything to do with it. The wide can't be allowed to interfere with the real world. So apparently what she was doing was something to do with the wired. So that's my connection to the PC. That's my connection to being on the PC all night. That's my connection to uh, Accela, which is nanomachines. Lane has infected machines somehow and is fucking with people somehow but not cognizantly so. That's why sometimes she's so obsessed with getting to a PC. 
Maybe some kind of serial experiments going on. Who the hell are you, he says, and then Lane takes a step forward. Keeps him repeating, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. This is a great reason why we have the, uh, I guess, laser sight uh, during this scene, which was otherwise somewhat of a weird detail. It's so we can see where he's pointing the gun without having the gun actually pressed against something. So he does turn the gun on Lane. Lane is unperturbed. The echo on the audio here is fantastic. It's like he's going insane. And then all audio cuts out. No matter where you go, everyone's connected. And very assertive vocal performance there. Love it. Very, very different. And he instead turns the gun into his own mouth and pulls the trigger. The, the blood splatters onto Lane's face. She may snap out of whatever she was into at this point, and, you know, this would be pretty traumatizing. Reminds her maybe of Chiso a little bit. Now, nah, still a little bit uncaring in the eyes for sure. And yeah, to be continued. That's the end of the episode. Ah, very intriguing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very, very, very intriguing. I guess I'm going to watch another one now. Uh, but yeah, watching this idea of, of Lane pulling the strings a little bit, of maybe not even being cognizant of it, maybe expressly um, not revealing information, like actively. But yeah, jumping into episode three right now uh, should be a blast. Radio got episode three of Serial Experiments Lane up here ready to go. Let me pop that up on the screen. Uh, 23 minutes and 56 seconds on this one, so sync up accordingly. And yeah, just going to give it a three, two, one. Radio, three, two, one, go. Present day, pres present time. I stuffed up saying it again. Yeah, that's not ominous at all, knowing what we know now. Look. Alright, reset that, me. This is this was wrong. Hey me! This is incorrect. Don't don't put the episode here. It's all gonna be fucked up and weird. Right here, just gonna give it a three, two, one. Right here, three, two, one, go. Yes, it is certainly present day and present time. And then this this lane here, another another clue into what we've been doing, maybe. Lucky, this is such a banger. I'm surprised, okay, something that I didn't expect going into the show is how watchable it would be. I was kind of dreading it in that respect. I thought it would be a little tougher to get through, a little bit more dry. But it's pretty quick. Well, quick's the wrong word. But it kind of flies by. I don't know. Something about it. Yeah, see, it's kind of a very different lane on the on the computer, right? On the On the screens. We'll keep it on it. I love the real life footage here, and it's almost like a tween between different scenes of it. I like her bare aesthetic. I think it's very cool. And we're all in a simulation, man. Everything's pausing in the middle of the air and stuff. Okay, same shot again. Okay, we're always in, in the city, right? Okay, and then back to Siberia. So straight where we left off. Again, this vocal over the top. Lane of the Wired. Excuse me? Who was talking? 
Psycho. Or psych. Whoa, very interesting shot there. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, that. Iwakura Lane. Yeah, it wasn't a great night out, was it? <laughs> yeah. But Lane's naturally very quiet. Maybe she was involved, more involved than maybe we think. She's alright. Well, relatively. Ah, Arisu? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, okay, maybe I, I judged her way too harshly. She, she seems like a really good friend. We just wanted to have a fun time. But we got hurt. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna head home, I guess. Why are you struggling with speech so much? That's a very low res. Yeah, okay, that's why we're doing that. Okay. Again, now our power lines, though. Getting dropped off in a police car. And why didn't the parents answer the phone? Were they too busy, like, boning? It's the wee hours of the morning, almost. Hmm. PC's gonna still be on, though. We've seen this shot before. Episode 1. Or the piano. Okay. The parents sleep in separate beds. Big red flag. A loveless relationship. And then that shot is nuts. We're going to break that down. <laughs> and then, yeah, the PC is still on. Of course it is. Maybe there's a new email for you. Go check. She went out in her slippers. That's kind of... Based. Or well, maybe she took him off at the door. That makes more sense. Because it is Japan. Whoa. You're like your eyes glazing over the the machine there. What do you see in the in the static? Oh. I fell asleep on top of it. Yeah, go to bed. I've done that before. It's not very comfortable. Very interesting scene. Very slow. Very, very slow. What's going on here? We didn't even get to see. Okay, we're going to Messenger. What a weird way... I guess there's no GUI. Is it like a text machine? It's weird. Okay. Bye-bye. Let's go to bed. Switch off. Plug it out of the PowerPoint. No. <laughs> it's like me telling myself this. Okay, she went to when she went to sleep. She didn't turn the PC off though. Always with the bears. I'm not quite sure what to make of that scene. 
And I'm, this is, she's in like heaven. This is like the Shinji roof. What are we doing here? Yeah, this is very Evangelion vibes. Okay, it is in a different place. It just looks weird because the sun looks weird in this show. Unless it's a dream? No, it's not. What did she see before? Apparently last night I kind of got like almost shot. <laughs> and you didn't even notice? There's also a bunch of other weird shit. Like why were you guys out of the house? And sleeping in separate beds. Yeah, they, these two shots back to back, classic. Been in every episode so far. Is the is the creepy guy here again? There's a creepy car. It's almost like a creepy guy. Could have a creepy guy in it. Ooh, great shot. Oh, it's like the laser again. Strange. Who is this? Lane of the Wired. Who's talking at you? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Power. The power lines. They're talking to me. What? What? Who are they talking about? Okay, so she got with a guy in the uh in the aftermath, maybe? In the shock of it all? No, that my parents didn't care and it was really weird. Who's the guy? What? Are they talking about the guy that died? Are they? <laughs> Whoa, okay, she's gone off the deep end. It's true, it is. So using the psych as like a processor for your machine, there was no reason to stay. Oh yeah, okay. Hello, hello Chisa. That's very sad. <laughs> Who is Lane? Lane is me. I can self-actualize. I have thoughts and feelings. Exact th this. So very much this. You guys are being weird. It didn't seem real. Siberia. What's in the note? That's what I was going to ask. Brown paper bag. It's not what I thought it was. It's not a confession. It's 
it's a piece for a computer, I believe, or maybe yourself. Again, we're talking about the psych as a as a power mechanism for a Navi. Keep bumping my mic today, I, I apologize. Yes, psych. Whoa, that's another great shot. Not terrifying at all. <laughs> what is happening? Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. Hold the knights. What do they say? This is very um drug trippy. Get off that computer, it's running your mind. This is like a VR chat lobby. Hmm, no information hidden. <laughs> All over the wired. Oh, very close to the ear. I'm loving the audio. Oh, Chisa? What's up? No, not at all. It's kind of freaking me out. It's making me trip on drugs. What is it? What? Yeah, you're being weird about it. What is going on? Yo! If it's even scaring the dad, someone that's so far down that hole, then it must be fucked up. What is it? Hello, government vehicle. She's getting, like, paranoid now, too. Oh, there's two dots. We're going back to Siberia. The next night. After what we did. Uh, okay, I thought... I thought... Okay. <laughs> I thought it was a little more nefarious than that. I thought I was gonna... Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Interesting. You're doing that through the wired, baby. Yeah, and these kids again. These kids, yeah, are very important for what we're talking about thematically. I 
Okay. It's a psyche. What do you mean by this? I thought it actually meant like a human psyche. Maybe it is still. Getting judged by like these 10 year olds, that's fun. Yeah, she's even younger than I thought she was. Have you gotten inside it? What do you mean by this? Is that what we see in the ED? Does she literally get inside the PC? It's funny, I heard Chuni, but it doesn't mean Chuni. That's funny. Yeah, it's just like building a PC. It's like Legos. Ooh, that's fun though, the audio. Not moving the mouth. Oh wait, no, no, it's this kid, but we're focusing on the other kid? But we hear it out of this ear. Weird. Weird decisions. I don't think she has much money. Yes, I am. How did you know? Yeah. Okay. It's true. People online may appear different than they are in real life. Yes. Yeah, go on a date with the uh, 10 year old. Oh, the other one. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Oh, she's jealous. It's funny. Alright. It's not ominous at all. The car's still here. And there's the sister. Mika. Ooh. Are there two people at the door? Yo, cyberpunk man. Oh, that's the guy that was staring at her the other day with the creepy eyes. We're here to get Lane, who's some kind of cyber lord. Yeah, the sister's probably very much worried now, right? I think that's what we've been building up. Now, mum's got some stuff going on, too. Mum doesn't really listen when kids say things that are really worrying. Still on the computer lane? You're all plugged in? I'm building a PC. <laughs> She's gaming right now. I guess, yeah, she is in something a little bit racy. Okay, yeah, that's true. I mean, the it's kind of a meme. You just have to ground yourself every now and again. What? <laughs> okay, that was very confusing right there at the end. Like loading in a different profile of herself. Okay. 
lots of stuff to talk about there. A lot of my suspicions from the previous episode have been have been confirmed, and that's good. This lack of thinking something's real, this separation between reality and what you see on a screen. So they saw somebody kill two people and then kill himself last night, and they're not shook up about it at all. Isn't that isn't that kind of like like I see like on Twitter or something every every couple of days mass shooting, uh, trouble in 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 wartime, trouble in Ukraine, trouble everywhere, right? And so desensitized to it all, you know what I mean? That's pretty profound, I think. Because it's right, I'm not on the I'm not on the ground, right? And seeing all of that all the time has just lessened the impact of it. Yeah, it was weird. The the recording corrupted a little bit right there at the end of the ED, which is weird. I hope the rest of the recording's okay. Like OBS just crashed. It was very funny, except it wasn't. Uh, hopefully the video is fine. But but I'm recording the next part now. And yeah, very, very interesting episode again. I talked about a few of the concepts already during the the part of the ED. I hope hopefully it's in there. Hopefully, fingers crossed. If not, uh, essentially. What I was talking about is kind of the separation between reality and what's on a screen and kind of becoming desensitized to a lot of stuff. I think that's something that Lane's diving into a little bit. There's also definitely some side of this that's looking at, hey, Lane isn't who she seems all the time, right? She may seem like this on the outside in the real world, but when she goes into the Wired, the stuff we haven't seen yet that she does is very different. Uh, It's a release of inhibitions in a way, right? may be who she really wants to be it may be who she is deep down revealed without the need of actual human contact and uh polite social norms i guess you would say as well either way i've already got the episode up here and i'm just going to go through it once more and see what i can see because there's a lot of different ideas here and i thought it was quite interesting definitely a thinker for sure it's getting my head moving so present day present time into the opening again get a little bit of cyber lane which is good now we have a little bit more context even now into what this is it seems lane has some level of uh, fame in in the wired as well for the people that are plugged in this same shot to open again i'm guessing this is probably a very famous shot that we're going to start a lot of our episodes on again smoggy disgusting people walking faceless no real connection between anybody you don't know these people, you know what I mean? You're doing nothing about them, they're anonymous. And the police have arrived, and we're immediately back to Siberia, and we're picking up from where the last episode left off. You've heard of a girl named Lane, right? Lane of the Wired. So Lane is is co-opting this Wired state when she's on the PC into some kind of real appearance. That's what I'm getting from it all. But it's again, it's all very... Is it real? Is it fake? It's all very perception-based. It's all very trippy. dream sequence it's hard to say. I'm guessing it's somewhat the manifestation of what, how you are online into a physical presence, especially with the title Psych. So, or Psyche, I should say. Psych would be without the E. I've probably been saying Psych this whole time. It's Psyche. Your Psyche is you. It's your brain, broadly. I don't actually know what it is within actual science. But again, the human Psyche is like the human condition the human experience and using that to power a machine is something we talk about later in the episode there's even a piece of technology the father is afraid of it so this shot here is fantastic love it we keep cutting back to it it's so um grainy and real looking right it, this feels like what lane was looking at really during that time and then we get intercut with like the blood and the laser and it, again it's just reminders of the scene that happened during that night are your parents away on vacation or something? I called the number you gave me, but no one answered. And again, we go to the house later on, nobody there. So what's going on there? No eyes here, so this shot between the investigator and the and Lane. Uh, no eye contact. She's kind of lying. Not lying, but she's not telling the entire truth. She hasn't told the entire truth to anybody yet, I don't think. Not even us. This is a great shot here. I'm guessing that this is Arisu's parents. This is Arisu looking at Lane. Lane's got this really blank expression where she's looking down. She must be feeling bad for Lane in the situation because she essentially brought her out that day. A real concern here for Marisu, who actually is a way more better friend than I gave her credit for. And then this part, she really struggles to get out Arisu. It's like she's still traumatized a little bit, a little bit shooken up or something more sinister, maybe. 
Andres sheds some tears here and says that they'll talk about it tomorrow at school. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that we will talk about it tomorrow at school in a very different way tonally than I thought we would. So do you want to head home? Lane, still contemplating, says the name Arusu again. Strange, very strange. I'm not quite sure what to make of that at all. Great pan down shot here into the police car coming over the little hill there. This whole portion is immaculately directed. Like, I just want to say that off the bat, so I don't say it every two seconds, but I'll, I'll break down the really cool shots. No dialogue in it, and we're, we're told a lot of information through actual animation. It's it's fantastic. It's show, don't tell. When we pan to the room that has two beds in it and no one's home, it, it opens up like a Pandora's box. Like, how many questions does that make from just one scene? We don't need dialogue explaining it. This is a repeated shot that we've seen in a previous episode, just this really look at a very clean well-kept house, kitchen, living room area. We've got a different light source coming here from the moon instead of the sun. The one we saw earlier was afternoon, and it was a little bit more weird. We had Lane standing here eventually, and the kind of shot warped around her a little bit. I remember that one. I, I don't know what it's trying to say other than the house doesn't seem lived in. It's very squeaky clean. Maybe the rest of the... We're not spending our time doing living in the living room when instead living in our separate rooms on our computers or, you know, we're not a take whole together family unit. So yeah, knocks on the parents' door and this is the shot I'm talking about. Like, how many questions does this raise? One, where are they? Two, why are they in separate beds? Three, why is it so well kept? Four, it looks like no one slept in here for ages. It's, again, way too squeaky clean. Why is the window open? Why are the blinds open? Why is Why do the beds look like hospital beds? So many questions. It's like it doesn't even get used at all. And then the shot, oh my goodness. Like Lane existing in the same space in the background moving around her to get her to her location. Yeah, and then she's right at the door. So weird. That's so creative. See, in some shows, right, your, you know, X-Arms, your Gibbets, your, your any other of those really bad canonical shows, you would see something like that and you'd be like, that's an animation error. That's bad. Blah, 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 blah. There's something about its use here that's fantastic. Th this is what I mean. Budget doesn't determine how good something is. That was a very cheap shot. You know? No animation in it at all. But it was fantastic. It was literally a character in space and we're moving somebody out on, a, on, a, on an image. But it looked fantastic. Either way, the only light source that we've seen in the house is the computer that is still on. And the computers, it's almost drug-like in this scene, right? She can't stop looking at it. She can't stop thinking about it. She's drawn to it. Okay, it's like somebody is, you know, addicted to something and they've been slowly waning off it and then they get a little taste and then a little taste and then they're a full-blown addict by the end again. And that's what we see during this episode. Little touch here, little taste there before becoming full-blown addicted by the end and getting all these different thoughts in her head at once. We're probably pushing our slow pace a little bit here. It is very, very slow. Again, pretty deliberate still, I'm still enjoying it, but probably leaning a little more on the on the too slow side, I think. But again, for somebody that has all the information, seeing stuff like this may be like, whoa, that was like a big tease for something that happens later, and I just wouldn't know. So maybe it is fit packed with meaning, I just don't know yet. Like she's seemingly seeing something, like she's staring at a screen, but she's not like registering what's on it. She's looking through it a little bit and looking at something else, you know, to the point where she falls asleep slightly. And then wakes up. It's like, what, where am I? And then wants to go to bed, but the computer's on. But go to bed, but the computer's on. I mean, my bed's like, like there. Like, I, this is very relatable. <laughs> she goes back and checks the living room again. Before checking a different room. But only peering in. But a screen's still on. Maybe it's her own room again. But she closes the door. Strange. She checks her messages one more time. No more messages from... From anybody says good night Navi, good night Lane. It responds. It's very weird. And yeah, we finally go to sleep. It's nice. And this very very subtle piano track, very simple track through the whole thing, just building tension. That doesn't really get resolved yet. We wake up to some blinding sunlight. It's almost like Shinji at the start of End of Evangelion. That's what I was evoking with this roof put up put up scene here. Similar from a lighting perspective, I would say. So we hear the shower going. We see a nice meal made for somebody. And the mum's doing the washing up. This audio is really muffled and really low. Don't you think it's embarrassing for a junior high schooler to be waking up so late? 
tries to tell mom about last night, but she doesn't really listen. She's pretty bad in that respect. She doesn't really listen to her kids at all. Same with the sister later on when she says about the weird men at her house. A normal mother would be really concerned about that, but this mother doesn't care. Very, very much detached. Does that say something about what ends up happening to Lane, that she doesn't have such a support network in, in her house that she turns to something like this? Maybe. Here yeah, she kind of questions last night, and the mum snaps back a little bit. It's not that she isn't interested. She just doesn't want to talk about what they did last night instead. So about last night, what? What about it? Nothing, nothing. Like, like she thinks that she's talking about what, what the parents were doing and not what she was doing. The sister seems like the most well-adjusted one in the family, honestly. Which is kind of saying something. So Lane starts to walk to school again, and we see a car instead of how we saw a human last time. It turns out the human and the car are one in the same. It's the same dude, he's just in a car this time, and he's got a weird thing on his eye that has like a laser on it. And he looks like he's from Cyberpunk. And the laser follows her, which means the vision, he's turning his head to follow her walking. And in the next one, we see two lasers at the back. So they're like looking at her at the back of the car as well, which is weird. This is where Lane just starts hearing voices. Um, they're people from The Wired uh, that are just talking to her. Because she can do that now. You are not alone. And then looking at the wires again. And then straight into school. That's great. That's fine. It's just not scary at all. So here, was he cute? Is in reference to the guy that died. That killed two people then killed himself. It's such a callous look at life. You know what I mean? Oh god. It is, it is downright sadistic. I... Couldn't believe it at first. I really couldn't. That's really fucked up. Yeah, the, oh god, it's it's so that's really creepy. That's like the creepiest thing in the show. Has to be. They're just laughing. Was he cute? Were you screaming? Yes. <laughs> that's so funny. What? What are you talking about? You witnessed a murder and a suicide, and you're like sixteen. You know? Did you get in trouble for last night? It wasn't really our fault. Well, no, but the, you're burying the lead a lot. A, a guy died. Was blood splattered all over? Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, terrifying. Terrifying scene. So whoever this voice is is telling Lane about the psych now. The psych is a very important concept going forward, I believe, so we're going to keep it on it and try to really understand it. Lane's kind of losing it. She's drawing squiggles on the, on the notebook, not really focused in class, just tripping, kind of. If you look at the psych as a mere processor, you lose sight of the whole. It's a multi-purpose information terminal that the Navi has come into wide use among grade schoolers, even among grade schoolers. However, activity within the wired is currently limited by the machine. The site can dramatically increase the performance of any Navi. So, she's going to put this piece of technology into her computer and it's going to make it even more powerful. So, whatever she's doing now is only a fraction of what she'll do later, or be able to do later, with the power of even controlling reality. Right now she can, I'm guessing, kind of project a form of herself out into the real world and talk with people and converse and be a different person. But with the power of this, what can she do? So whilst hearing this tutorial on the psych, so it's weird, right? The psych is seemingly a piece of technology that you put in the computer and does stuff, but it is also clearly related to the human psyche, right? Even if not practically, metaphorically, right? So if we put ourselves into the computers, they become more and more powerful. The more we put in, the more we get out. Weird, weird idea. Either way, um, uh, Chisa's talking, and Chisa died, and the reason why she died was, well, I guess she'll, I'll let her talk. In the real world, it didn't matter if I was there or not, so giving up my physical presence and going to the wide like this was a better alternative. It, 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 I was losing nothing and gaining something. When I realized that, I was no longer afraid of losing my body. But again, Lane's still like freaking out here sometimes, but sometimes she's stone-faced. So it's almost like she has multiple personalities. And then who is Lane? Who is Lane? As we look further and further into the spiral. Who is Lane? Am I the Lane on the computer that's a very different me? Or am I the Lane that I am right now that has all these other expectations placed on me? Now this is very strange as well. Arisu is seemingly aware of how fucked up this situation is. How fucked up how talk, them talking about the dead guy was, right? 
but can't stop herself from doing so. She's so desensitized. She even realizes that she's desensitized, but still can't stop herself. I think that's that's a very interesting idea. Again, very true to even 2023. Something I was just talking about before. Very relevant. Lane receives a brown envelope here, and the girls speculate that it may be a confession, but it is not. It is not any form of love or care or want or anything. It is a piece of computer equipment to enhance herself into the white even more. So either way, yeah, Arasu is still trying to have this serious conversation about not being able to take it seriously. And then the other girls are like, oh, but but confession. Like, now focus on what she has to say. Yeah, Arasu is even first. Actually, I'm wrong. No, Arasu changes tact immediately. That's so weird. That's so very weird. Talk about boring. It's only a piece of computer equipment. It's, it's the psych, it's the psyche, whatever you want to call it. She looks down at her hand into the psych again. It's kind of seemingly looks like two pills as well. Can we relate that? I don't know. Maybe that's a stretch. She says the word psyche and then stares into the camera for a little bit. That's great. Like the zoom out from the mouth. In here very close. Then, oh God. <laughs> Ignore VLC. That's not the show. Yeah, from here. Yeah, there we go. Great shot. Fantastic. Very creepy. And then this is when she plugs in, like she gives over to her addiction a little bit more. That's why we're getting our kind of really psychedelic cloud type stuff. And we get some interesting lines from various groups, I guess. This is just her like overloaded with information, basically. Like, I love kissing. Just kissing is enough to make me happy. Like, and all different people. Some guy was talking about a resume earlier. And then somebody starts talking about the stupid kid on Axella shot himself and shot two people and you can't find it anywhere now because whoever the supplier was freaked out this is reflecting the spiral that wayne was drawing in a notebook earlier again showing how trippy this whole experience is talk about a group called the knights as well which i don't know if that'll become relevant but sure there's seemingly a lot of different urban legends in the in the wide as well and then i paused on this line which i missed during the reaction dying feels so good okay what did you say um i'm guessing that uh Chisa bought into a lot of this. I feel accelerated. What the? There's someone in my room. It's a little person like a kid in a red and green striped shirt. I don't... I'm not quite sure I understand. Unless she's just like super paranoid and, and really like tripping. I have a picture of you with your secret lover. It's somebody like blackmailing somebody over the net as well. It's this very seedy underbelly. And still seeing, yeah, kind of seeing the swirl in this, kind of, again, looking past the screen into something else, like we were earlier in the episode. And then Lane, why won't you come here? Lane also received a new email, just as this happened as well, before the dad interrupts, says, Lane, what are you doing? Now, this scene floored me during the reaction. I don't know if I, don't know if I had a good face during it, but it was what I was thinking. Because this guy, up to this point, has been so interested in computers. So very Every single part of them. He wants them in every portion of his life. He he loves them. He froths them. He gets home from work and the first thing he does is turn on the PC. So if Lane shows him a piece of gear and he goes no. And then walks away, turns to go. And then just nothing. Again, lack of eye contact. I said I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't even want to entertain the prospect. It is so dangerous. Right? Is that what we're getting at? So dangerous? Something that he doesn't even want to get involved with. So Lane takes it upon herself to go to Siberia and ask some people that may actually know. In the process, she still is being watched by two different lights now in this car. The two lights we see at the very end of the episode. Similar shots again, uh, leading us to believe that we are leading up to Siberia. Again, we keep doing this thing where we're, we're juxtaposing like Siberia connection with... Uh, this connection with maybe this maybe these are two wired avatars we don't know you know what I mean like maybe this person doesn't really look like this maybe this person doesn't really look like this we're getting into a little bit of the the whole um like gas not gaslighting uh catfishing phenomenon you know and how really bad this could be this girl could be underage this guy could be 47 we, we don't know Again, a very interesting concept for 98 when this came out. Yeah, seemingly we're framing it very disgustingly. Something that Lane doesn't want any part of. At least the Lane in this form. Lane gets called out for by this random rave dude. 
Where have you been lately? I haven't seen you around. She's probably never seen this person in her entire life, in her actual physical existence. But he knows Lane very well, the Lane in the Wyatt. You're sure going for the little girl look today. Again, she does look very grown up when she's, you know, out of the Wyatt. Or no, in the Wyatt, I should say. She sees these three kids from before. They're going to be very relevant going forward, just as an understanding of, hey, kids are becoming increasingly involved in this stuff at a young age and probably don't know what they're doing and just think it's cool. And in reality, it's actually quite dangerous. Like, what are they drinking? You know what I mean? Is it just chocolate milk? <laughs> so what she's holding is a psyche. She learns that now. You put it into your PC and it makes it go boom. Makes it go better. So I underestimated these kids' age from the last episode. They're not like even teens. They're like less than 10. So with that thing installed, I could even get full access to the wired with even this, the thing in his pocket. She could be forever in the wired and have more control over that than ever. Have you gotten inside the Tachibana yet? Have you gotten inside the machine? Well, we see her inside the machine during the ED, but I don't think that's what they mean. Have you started tinkering around with the with all the different stuff, plugging it into the motherboard and that? And I don't think she has. And it, okay, even Lane is, is younger than I thought, right? She says that she's in ninth grade, eighth grade, which is, yeah, I thought she was first year of high school, but she's not. Yeah, so, so what we're doing here is we're not focused on this. We're focused instead on the looks between these two characters. Like, I think this kid's thinking, hey, I think I know you, right? You need to watch out for static electricity, which is something she does at the end of the episode as well. And now this kid has figured out who Lane is. Information isn't free, not in the wired or in the real world. Again, conflating the two. What are you going to give me? I've seen you before. Let's go out on a date. I want to see if this happens next episode. So again, it's it seemingly is a perspective thing. Lane may be unaware that she's going into the wired when she is. Maybe she's, again, trance-like state when at the computer. And this kid wants to have a date with Lane, but not the normal kind of Lane that's here right now. I want the wild Lane. I want the you that's online. I want the you that, that I perceive you as through your online presence. If that's not true, what is? That's That's crazy. 98, huh? That's insane. That's like, this is like dating profile stuff, right? I want the, I want the person from your dating profile, not, not the you that exists in real life. That's really boring. I want the you, the front that you put up. I want the fakeness. And the kid backs off because, well, he's a kid and Lane gives him a stare and he's like, oh, well, no, maybe not. And this girl's very jealous. She probably likes the boy. That's funny. We get to the next afternoon or the next morning. I don't know why I should be walking back to the house if it was the morning. Either way, there's a couple of ne'er wells at the at the door. The two that were maybe in that car before, as we see with the red lights here in a second. You never saw us. It's like they're secret agents or something. Yeah, I have I have lots of questions about these guys. What are you guys' deal? Is it what Lane's doing is really weird and really fucked up? And this government organization maybe realizes how powerful this new wired tool is and is maybe going to use it or is maybe going to stop people using it the way they were using it because that is certainly something that they do as well. <laughs> we're not here. And the look on this guy, it's definitely the guy from episode two that was staring down Lane. So the mum's cooking again and the sister keeps trying to talk to the mum. Hey, if they show up again, what are we going to do? Should we call the cops? Are they the cops? What's going on? And the mum just doesn't really seem to care. So then the sister, Mika, Mika goes to see Lane because Lane may have some opinions on it as well. Like, hey, Lane, what are you, what are you doing? Lane's going to tinker around on her PC. She's putting her psych or the psych into the PC. She's got the little screwdrivers as well that you use for PC building. So that's fun. Yeah, she's um she's r really rooting around in there. It's, um, it's probably a way different kettle of fish in 98 than it is now it's very plug and play these days with building pcs and i never really had this experience because i was one year old in 98 so <laughs> yes of course why are you dressed like that it's because of the static electricity that she took off most of her clothes so i thought it'd be safest if i took off all my clothes i took off all my protection are you kidding and then this welcome home sis it's like she's loading in a different profile even the editing on it yeah, that's that's at two times speed, but it's kind of it kind of fades up, like there's three of her. It reminds me of the the ghost girl, where there's two versions of her that exist at the same time, placed on top of each other, and then yeah, to be continued, and that's the end of our episode. God, there's so much going on. <laughs> that's a really cool show. 
I'm really enjoying it. It's um really progressed in the episodes two and three out of just its concept phase into, hey, what are we actually going to be talking about? Where's the plot going? What are we doing with it? I didn't know that Lane would be semi-antagonistic, seemingly, but she is. Seems like she's the bad guy in all of this. I guess there's the CIA guys that are a little bit bad as well, but I don't know. It seems like everyone else is just a... It seems like everybody in the show is just a victim of whatever this wired concept is. Which is, again... I, 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 I need to find more words for interesting. Because I keep saying it when describing this show. Which is probably a good sign. Uh, but yeah. Excited to watch more next week. It's definitely thought-provoking. For sure. Uh, just my show stuff again before I leave. If you like the video, consider liking the video. If you like this video and want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back. And the Discord, join the Discord, love the Discord. Uh, suggest new shows in the Discord, as I said. Well, I didn't actually take Lane from a suggestion, but when Lane ends in, what, now it'll be five weeks or so, uh, there will be a new show replacing it, and I'll take suggestions from that requests for the channel, channel on Discord. So... Use it at your leisure, suggest shows, that kind of bag. Yeah, anyway, thank you very much for watching this week, and I'll catch you next week for more Lane. Right here. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you later.